really don't have any seats today, I'm making a tutorial for you guys. Today's job tutorial is sort of a miscellaneous tutorial. There are a lot of like little things I haven't covered yet that weren't worth making a whole tutorial just for that. So there are basically three things that I wanted to cover that that just some cramming in this tutorial. Those are strings, basic input, and variable conversions. So I, I told you I printed data types a little while ago, and all all types of variables in, in Java are based off print data types. And the one I'm going to talk about today is no different. The one I'm going to talk about today is going to be strings. Now, a string, you can store words or phrases, or even entire sentences or paragraphs if you wanted to, all that probably wouldn't be a good idea, into strings. And strings are basically just a series of chars pasted together, and, and that's um, how it's built up on the print data type. So today we're going to learn how to make, work with, the, with strings, and that's the first thing I want to talk about. And the second thing I want to talk about is basic input. Now, when you run a program, you type on Java and name of the program, right? Well, you can run and put arguments after the name of the program and then use them in your program. So, for instance, a lot of Hello World program uh, tutorials will, will say Java Hello World and then they'll say um, APC, your, your name. And then it'll, it'll be programmed to print out whatever you put after the Hello World. So it might say, in this case, it would say Hello APC. And, um, that's how the arguments work. I'm, I'm going to teach you how to how to do stuff like that in your program. It, it's very useful, seeing as you get a little bit of interactive ideas to it rather than just running the same every single time. And the third and last thing I want to talk about is variable conversions. Well, I talked a little about primitive data type casting in, in my primitive data test tutorial, and today I'm going to talk about how you can convert more complex data types, in this case strings, down to primitive data types. So in this case, if you put in a number as, as your argument, it will be registered as a string, but you, if you want, you can convert it over to an uh, int or um, one of the numbers, the whole numbers, and I'll be telling you how to do that and then you can use it after, you can use them as numbers afterwards. So without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I've already named my Java file, and now I'm going to create the class. Alright, that's our class. Yeah, this is, this class is a little bit mouthful, there's so much stuff we're covering in this tutorial. I want it to be accurate, but in general, just for future reference, um, it's probably not a good idea to make Variable names and class names very long because then they become hard to work with. And, and now we're gonna go move on to our main method. All right, so now we um we got that standard stuff down. We're gonna start with the first thing on a list of three things that we're gonna cover today: strings. Okay, so a string is a variable just like anything else, only it's a little more complex than primitive data types we learned earlier. So I can say string test equals this. Simple enough. So string is the type. It's not highlighted because no have plus plus isn't as good with highlighting as some of the other programs that are specifically made of Java. It only has primitive data types and some some of these modifiers. The string isn't set, but it is um it is a real variable. And name is test and we put this in quotation marks to show that it's a word and not a variable. And notice that double quotations. If we were doing a character, it would have been single quotation, but since it's a word, double quotations. So that's how you would create strings. And then you can use them to print you can print them out and do all kinds of stuff with them with them. And now we're gonna move on to the second thing I want to talk about. Basic input. Basic input's fun stuff. I use it all the time. So here we have our main method, right? And the main method is a uh, method, and like I talked about last last tutorial, we have these pr these parentheses right here, and in between them is a parameter. So it's kind of weird. How can we input, how can you input parameters into the main method? Because whenever you start a method, you, you do that within the code, and the main method is the first method you run, so it's impossible to input parameters, right? Well, there is a way to input parameters when you first run the code, and I'm going to show you how to do that now, but first I'll tell you how they're sa saved. What this is, is it's a string, but it's an ar a string array, and we're going to talk about arrays in a later tutorial, but just think of it as a list of things. Let me make a little comment here. So if args is the name of the array, and put down the brackets, and in between the brackets put down the index that you want to search. So if it's down arg0, that would be the, the first thing in the list. First list in array. And then args1 is second second on the list, and etc. Here's a, this is a, actually introduced a programming concept that comes up a lot. The first thing on the list doesn't have an index of one, it's zero. Very often in programming, when they start with zero instead of one, because zero is a number, and they it would be basically wasting a very good number if you just started with one. So you're gonna have to get used to it. It gets confusing sometimes, like if you have the sixth index, you're really on the seventh thing on the list. So just keep that in mind for future reference. Qu the million dollar question, how, did, um, how can you input things in the method when it starts, right when the class starts and you can't run anything in it? The way it works is you input arguments command prompt. There you go, sorry, and that comment, and that's a little thing. Okay, so I'm gonna move to 
command prompt to show you how this works. I'm gonna type down echo off to give me more space to work with. There we go. Okay, so you type down a standard command, Java something. So that's how you would run the something class. So after that, you can input your argument. So if I say, I love Java, you, you have spaces in there, so those separate the arguments. So there are three arguments here. I love and Java. Let me just mark it for a okay. Market. Okay. If um, so I would be stored un under the first index arg zero. So if I type arg zero in our code, it'll know that it's equals string i. Args one would be the string love, and args three would be the string java. So that's how you would input arguments. So that said, we want our string to be named name because we're going to input our name into the arguments. We want to be equal to args zero. Another thing I want to remind me of that I said main is method, and you get to choose what you want to name this args. And I use the args, but you see people sometimes name it arguments, in which case you would need to name this variable arguments as well because you need to match this part up here. But I name it args, so as long as you match, make sure they match. Okay, I'll just keep moving along. Now we're going to use a new method in order to print this out. System.out.print. And usually we put an ln here, but okay, what the ln stands for is line, and if we use print ln, it'll print on its own line, but if you use print, and something that's already printed on that line before, it'll just keep paste it right on the back of that so that's why you print it. So that's the difference between print and print ln. It's a very minute dis di difference, but you really want to know it because it's pretty preliminary stuff. So we're going to say your name is, so just standard string, that's what's going to be input. Then we're going to add on our name variable. Okay, simple enough. We'll compile it. Compile it fine, that's perfect. And now Java, we're going to run it. Okay, so normally you'd press enter and you'd see if it worked, but now we're going to type in our our input or argument. I'll put in my name, but you'll put in your name, I'm assuming. APC. So that'll be the first argument in the code. It'll be arg0. So I press enter. Your name is APC. That's the computer talking to me. So there we go. It's a little bit interactive now, and we can have it say stuff to us based on what we put input. So that's, oh, that's really cool. Now we're going to work with the second argument. So we'll create a new variable, byte age. It's going to be a byte number, and we're going to set equal to args1. For advanced programmers, if they see this little bells be going off their head saying, no, 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 this isn't, this can't work this way because this is a string, and this is a byte, and they are very incompatible. Well, yes, they are very incompatible. When we were working with primitive data types, we could do something like that, and this would convert it over, but it's not that simple with strings because it's more complex conversion process. So, we need a method that's specifically designed to convert strings over to bytes. Luckily, in, there's a big um, library of methods that Java provides us, and we, we're going to take advantage of them. So there's a class called byte, and within that class, there is a method called parse byte. And if we put parentheses on that, there you go. This will ta take that as a parameter, and as a return type, it'll, it'll give a byte, and it'll do the best it can to convert that string over to byte, and it'll set equal to age. Now you've learned something new about class structure, because we have a, the class byte, and within that one, we, we, we pulled out a method. The same system with them. It's the same system with them. Our print, print, and print LM methods. So we go under system, which is a class, and inside that system class is another class. This class you'd say extends system, but we'll get more into that later. That's that's inheritance. That's a little bit complex. And then in this out class is the print method. So that's how we find it every time. So now we've got this this string args one converted over to a byte. Now we'll just print out system.out.print. Remember, this will print right behind what we have here. So we're going to start with a space because we want there to be space after the name and say, and you are this many years. Press enter there, running out of space. Old. There. Now, this and that isn't turning gray, which is scaring me a little bit, but I think just because uh, the Java compiler is still, still running correctly. That's just a problem with Notepad. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Um, so I'm saving it, and now I'm gonna run it, or no, I'm compile it. Okay, I guess that was wishful thinking on my part. We're going to move this years part down to the next line, and there we go. Never panic when you see errors, just read through them and think through them logically. So now we've moved it down, and it should work better this time. So compile, there we go, fixed. And then run, and then it says exception because I only input a name. See so APC. So now I gotta put down age. I am 18 at the moment. So now it says your name is APC and you are 18 years old. There you go. Perfect. So t today we learned how to take an inputs and we learned that strings. We know how to work the inputs now, and we can plug them into our code 
at will, and if we want to convert one over to a number, we can do that now. So now, now that you know that, you should be equipped to try out my challenge, so, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so for today's challenge, I want to make another class, and we've created a profile of ourselves in the tutorial, and I want you to create a profile of your pet. So, type on Java, and the class I made, I call it my dog, but I guess if you don't have a dog, you can call it my cat, or my fish, or my imaginary friend, or something like that. So, the first argument is going to be name of your pet, or whatever, or your name of your pet, and my name of my pet is Misty, named after that girl in the first season of the Pokemon TV series. I was first named her, and I was like, I was like six years old. Next one we're going to do is what type of dog, or animal she is. So, she's a Cocker Spaniel. Note that if you don't want Cocker Spaniel to be recognized as two individual arguments, you have to put quotations around it so it's recognized all as one argument. And then, how old is she? And she is 12 years old, almost 13. Here it is. Your dog's name is Misty. He or she is a Cocker Spaniel. And she, uh, I probably should chance it, he or she, is four 4,380 days old. So that's another part of the challenge. I want you to convert this from years to days. Now there is one problem you're gonna come across with it, and uh, that's gonna require you using a different method than I use in the tutorial. And this is a good good challenge for you, I think, because you're gonna have to either guess what the method name is, which is what, what I did the first time I came across this problem, and you might be able to get it by guessing, or you can look it up. Either way, you'll figure it out on your own, and it'll be good for the future, because in the future, you will have to figure things out on your own a lot, because it's impossible to memorize everything. So that is all for this tutorial. I hope you you found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate it if you rate, rated the video and, and leave a comment. Or And if you want to stay up to date on my newest Java tutorials or whatever tutorials I do in the future, please subscribe and you'll be notified whenever I make new videos. And if you uh, found this challenge helpful and think that you could use a more challenge to um, solidify or to further help your skills with Java, then I would recommend going to my website, sinforge.co. There you can find a list of challenges. There's only five up there right now, but I, I will add more soon, I promise. You can also find my games there and a big list of all my tutorials. It's also a work in progress, so any critique will be much appreciated. So I'll, I'll, I'll end it here. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time.